take a look at the starting lineup. Duez Henderson, the 6'7 senior, number 23. Reggie Evans, high flying. The other senior at the other forward spot. The big center is Reiner. Pierce and Wrecker in the backcourt. And for Memphis, John Calipari in his second year as the head coach of the Tigers. Scooter there at one forward. Kelly Wise, the 6'10 senior. Chris Massey is the 6'9 junior center. And in the backcourt, Burks works with Duan Wagner. The always Natalie attired John Calipari. If he didn't coach basketball, he could model for GQ. So we'll take a time out here and come back and jump it up. They're enthusiastic at the Kepler Arena. And why not? A couple of top 24s live next. Touch up paint. Oops. Bendix brakes. TRW tie rods. Rabbit's foot. Advance Auto Parts carries more parts than any other store, including one you won't find anywhere else. First driving lesson? Advance Auto Parts. The best part is our people. Get around with the family there. Gonna eat, gonna eat my shit. It's a fine, it's a fine day. Dodge is giving you something special to take home for the holidays. The security of 70-year or 100,000-mile powertrain protection on any new Dodge. Plus, we've extended 0% APR on select 2002s through the end of the year. It's good to see you, Dad. No thanks. It gives me gas. Tonight's Guardian Classic Basketball is being brought to you by Dodge. You can take life as it comes, or you can grab life by the horns. Dodge. And by Wellmark Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Iowa. An independent licensee of the Blue Cross and Blue Shield Association. You just can't beat the Blues. The Guardian Classic. More action coming up. against number 14. Bob Wenzel's alongside. How do you see it early on? Well, I'll tell you what. This is a very, very interesting matchup to me. Iowa is much more experienced. Both teams extremely talented. And two of the top players played against one another in high school. Series, Iowa leads it. And, of course, the Keith Lee was the star of Memphis that day in 1983. And Iowa held him in check and came out with the win. DeWan Wagner. He is capable of lighting it up. Calipari has said that he could score 50 in a college game. And Evans, he is an absolute man. I'll tell you what, any coach would love to have him. MVP of the Big Ten tournament last year. You could do worse than just recruit at Camden High School. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. And, of course, Louisville for many years recruited a, a bunch of players. Billy Thompson and Milt Wagner and others. Luke Recker. The other All-American at Iowa. They have two bona fides. Set to go, Wise and Reiner. I think the officials need to practice their toss. Jim. They reset the clock. In the backcourt, Burks. to man by Iowa. They're going to try to stay up. We'll see if there's any double teams on Wagner. Back over to Burks. In the paint. Dishes off. Like a rugby scrum. Time up. Great hustle early by both squads. Steve's very happy about his guys getting after it and jumping on the floor. Both coaches love that kind of intense play. 
Watch right here, a pretty takes. nice dish right here by Burks and not able to handle it. Pass was too low, and as a result, big guys cannot handle the ball when it's passed down by their knees, and we've got everybody involved in this one. Tuesday night, football. There was, there was more action right there than there was in the Vikings-Giants <laughs> game last night. <laughs> Unusual to get a timeout so early in a game. I'm not so sure that's quite advisable for Iowa to have done that, but they get it back in any in any case. Iowa comes in impressive victories over Maryland Eastern Shore, over Boston University and Louisiana Tech, and they've got a date with Duke on the calendar coming up. What the 27th of November? Huh? Yes, and Duke, of course, a near loss last night, one point victory over Seton Hall. Full court pressure by Memphis, successful. Wise had it slapped away. Memphis. Memphis wants to obviously get the pace of the game going. Iowa would prefer a half-court five-on-five game. Out to Burks. Swings it down low. Scooter could not come down with a rebound, and the Hawkeyes cross center court for the first time. Pierce, eight-footer, off iron, no good. Rebound comes down to the Tigers. They want to run. Here comes Burks flying. First points on the board for the Tigers. You know, in a situation like this, Jim, when you begin playing, especially with some young players, there's a lot of nervous tension in the early part of a game, and as a result, some wild shots. And it was a wild shot by Pierce. He's a freshman point guard trying to show up Wagner a little bit. They played against each other in high school all-star games. Backcourt foul against Memphis. Pierce made that shot this morning in the shoot-around, though. <laughs> yeah. A little different in the shoot-around in the real game, isn't it? First foul on Wagner. He's got to be careful. Young players sometimes get so enthusiastic about playing, and Wagner fits this mold that they get a little over-anxious, especially when you're pressing. You've got to avoid fouls. Be aggressive without fouling. Juan Wagner, the six-foot-three freshman out of Camden, New Jersey. Pressure by the Tigers. It's been quite successful so far. You know, you're talking about a freshman point guard. Last year, Steve had the luxury of having Dean Oliver as his point guard. The guy was there for four years now with the Golden State Warriors, so now he's trying to find a point guard. Wagner off the rim. Hawkeyes come down with it. Hotties everywhere. Won't fall. Excellent job again by the Tigers on the board. Well, Massey is a physical specimen in there, and this is his first year. I mean, he was a great junior college player, but this is new to him, having this many big bodies around. Most of the time, he's playing against 6'6 six, six guys where he's from. Try to go back door and the foul. Alford does not like that one bit. Everybody's a little rusty early. Pierce brings it down. Well, Pierce was the second leading vote getter for Mr. Basketball in Illinois to Ed Curry, who, of course, was a player who went to the Chicago Bulls in the first round of the draft, averaged 36 a game. Nice movement here. Down in the paint, Hawkeyes. Won't fall. Another board for the Tigers. Timeout, Memphis. They've got the only two points. We're early at the Kemper Arena, 17.54 to go in the first half. So far, it's been very aggressive at both ends. Lots of players diving on the floor. There are a lot of tall players involved here. You see Reggie gets it inside, but the ball is too low. As a result, you've got Wise and Massey and Barron all around him. And it's on the floor. It doesn't matter how tall you are. The couple little guys of, have the advantage then. A couple of experimental rule changes in... Uh, in our Guardians Classic, right, Bob? Yes, and we have we have the uh, the jump balls will be held at half court in the in the normal alternate possession situation, and here we see them. Free throw in three second lane is widened to the NBA, so we'll show you that when we get to a free throw situation, and um, so that's the limitation. The jump balls are going to be an alternate possession, so instead of instead of having alternate possession, you're going to have a jump ball. So it's a little bit different kind of thing here. And it's going to be interesting to say in the you can use experimental rules like this and the NCAA permits this in what's called exempted games. These in the Guardians Classic come under that classification. Iowa 0 for 3 in field goals. Memphis 
one for four. Scooter dishes it back. Good move down to the baseline and the foul. Memphis has good quickness. Wrecker has a difficult time guarding guys that are very, very quick, and Scooter has an extremely quick first step. Right here, they isolate. He goes away from the screen. And a little, little contact. In the Big Ten, that might have not have been called, but um, here in Kemper Arena, it is. Out of Raleigh, Egypt High School, where averaged 21 and a half points a game, 7.7 rebounds, and was a 90% free throw shooter in high school. And he is a local favorite. Uh, that high school is in Memphis, and they love Scooter at Memphis. Wise also from Memphis. It's a very good basketball city. I mean, Wise is from Fort Walton Beach, but Scooter there. And Antonio Burks also from Memphis. Full court pressure continues. Eight out of ten at the line so far for Scooter this year. I'll tell you what, Iowa looks extremely shaky. If Steve Alford was playing, I think he wants to put himself in right now. He'd be able to get the ball up against the press. Alford, of course, the 87 graduate for the Hoosiers, leading Indiana to that 87 NCAA title. Absolutely. One yeah. gold medal on the Olympic team also when he played. Massey with a nice save. Gets it back to Wise. Won't fall. Both teams a little nervous. Memphis now one out of six for a field goal. Evans. Here's to the baseline, reverse, finally. Woo! Three Slick minutes move. in, Hawkeyes finally get their first two. The other way, tipped up. Nice dish and dump by Massey. For Memphis to get up on Iowa early in this game is very important for the confidence of their team. I asked Calipari this afternoon at practice what he thought was going to happen. He said, I have no idea. These young players, first-year players, for him, some are second-year players. I don't know what's going to happen when they're in a new situation, and this is totally new. Solid defense here by Memphis. Double-teaming Evans. Down low, Evans gets it over Runner. Evans, when he was double-teamed, Jim, nicely hits Reiner down the middle. And, of course, we talked about how Evans not only is a 22-point game type play, but he also can pass. Approaching the 16-minute mark. No foul. Hawkeyes bring it down. Pierce. Wrecker for three. Slow start. Hawkeyes now starting to get it back, finding their rhythm. Well, Wrecker, of course, has had an unbelievable history. Mr. Basketball in Indiana, went to the University of Indiana, transferred to Arizona, was in a car wreck, then transferred to Iowa and has been tremendous. He did not play last year at the end of the year. Problem with his kneecap, but he's totally healthy now. And with Evans and Wrecker, they're in business. Wrecker from DeKalb High School, the communications major. His dad played college ball at Bluffton College. Now at Denny's, check out great bargains on shock absorbers, McPherson struts, and coil springs. Get guaranteed value at Denny's Muffler Center, the undercar specialists. Fin and Feather is your source for cold weather apparel. And stay warm in hats, neck gaiters, mittens, and gloves by Columbia, Layers, Manzella, Turtle Fur, Marmot, and Low Alpine. Choose from this area's best selection of Columbia parkas at the lowest prices you'll find anywhere, guaranteed. Treat your feet to the comfort of a pair of acorn slippers, then wrap yourself in a Woolrich throw. Warm up this winter with help from Fin and Feather in Iowa City and Cedar Rapids. KGAN is committed to bringing you the news that affects you close to home. These National Guard troops have been here. And fire departments, events that happen around our country and the world affect us here at home. KGAN brings you these events as they happen, live. Then we provide you the close to home perspective. It will reduce their exposure to anthrax spores. Is increased security. Straightforward to the point reporting from experienced local journalists. KGAN is news close to home. If you've had a fender bender or have collision damage of any kind, come to the professionals at Premier Automotive. Our new state-of-the-art facility and 70 years combined experience enables us to make your car look as good as the day it rolled off the factory floor. Colony Heating and Air Conditioning. 319364 Heat. 
Happy holidays. We're back live at Kemper Arena. If you're thinking about a gift for that man, how about a tie shop? <laughs> I love that. Inside, Memphis is going to double-team Reggie Evans every catch. And here they are with Wise and Massey. Evans unselfishly gets the ball to Reiner, and he turns that into two. So strategy-wise, we're going to see a lot of double-teaming. The Big Ten MVP of the Big Ten tournament in Chicago last year. 6'8", 250 out of Pensacola, averaging about 22.7 points per game. Memphis now, two out of eight field goals. Iowa, three out of six. After the timeout, Calipari comes with a different kind of pressure. No double teaming in the backcourt this time. Trying to change things up. Confuse Iowa. Pierce swings it over on the right side. Won't drop. Up oh, and in. man. Are you kidding me? What a rebound. Reggie. Oh, I'll tell you, you got to keep a body on him. I would not even help off of him at any time. He could play tight end, too, couldn't he? Oh, man. Massey spins from eight. Good place to double team along the sideline. Pierce against Burks. Swings it down the middle. Nice dish. Will not go. Offensive rebound put up once. Take a look. Reggie Evans here. I'll tell you what. Rector makes a one-on-one -on -one move, and, and Wise comes over to help. You cannot leave Evans. You're better off letting Rector take a jump shot uncontested than come off Reggie. He can score when you pass it to him. He can pass to his teammates, and he is tough on the offensive boards. Wagner, conspicuously absent so far in Memphis offense. Scooter's got it, wants to cross court to Burks. Nice inside. Wise, partially blocked away, and here come the Hawkeyes the other way. Experience right here. Henderson's been around for four years. There's the double team again. This time he finds record, but he steps out of bounds. Almost like preseason jitters early. Yeah, on. yeah, I, I think you get a feel for that, don't you? You know, they played, both of these teams had these uh, Guardian games in their home, so they played home games, comfortable, sleeping in their own bed, playing on the court you practice on all the time. Now this is a neutral site for all of these teams. So it's a little bit different kind of atmosphere. Safe to say also that the bar has been raised a little bit as far as John Calipari's expectations now in the second year? Well, I think so. You know, I mean, they, they were very good last year. 21 uh, wins. They're selling out, uh, you know, their arena, the pyramid down there in Memphis, a beautiful place to play. I mean, he's a marketing genius, and he's got things going down there right now. And he is an extremely talented group. No double team on Massey by Iowa. Bad shot by Burke. And a collision, backcourt. Well, Chauncey Leslie's in the game right now, number one. And, and Chauncey is a new player. He's a junior because he's a junior college transfer. Calipari a little concerned about foul trouble right now, but Chauncey Leslie plays point guard. So this is the second point guard you've seen in the game so far. Pierce out, Leslie adds quickness. Might be better against the pressure that they're seeing. Baseline jumper, eight footer is good. Smooth. Carlos Santana might say he's a smooth operator. Luke Record, very experienced. Averaging about 17 and a half points a game, Luke is. Well, we've played just under six minutes here. Semi-final action of the Guardians Classic, live from Kemper Arena. Hawkeyes, rank number eight. And Memphis, rank number 14. Well, I think Iowa's defense has really held stern here. They made a couple of bad one-on-one -on -one plays, but Steve Shuffling, Reiner, and Sunderlider in and out. It's kind of a two-headed center for this team this year. He's hoping he can get production from both of them. Barron comes in for Massey, and he's a seven-footer. Not as physical as Massey, but very tall, lengthy, capable of scoring close to the basket. Hawkeyes have been on a 9-2 run. Wagner, way off balance, puts up air ball. Well, he hasn't had many touches, I'll tell you. You know, I'm surprised that John isn't running a few plays designed specifically for Wagner. We'll see how he holds his temperament. Not getting a lot of touches. Normally, by this time in a high school game, he'd have about 30. There you go. 
out of bounds play set just for him. Margin is one. A couple of number ones in the backcourt. Leslie brings it down against Burke. Bob talked about Leslie's quickness. He also brings smarts. He was on the honor roll at Marshall High School. Out of bounds, still Iowa's ball. Watch Wagner now fight through. But well, offensive two set screens for him in a row and gets wide open. He's got to thank his teammates for that one. Nice looking jumper. Of course, his dad was a great player for Louisville, had his number retired at the University of Louisville. Many people thought DeWan would go to Louisville because of that, but of course, Milt now on the staff of John Calipari. Getting the clock straightened out right here with the officials. How smart was Calipari? Ira <laughs> Milt there as an assistant. Also recruited Wagner's best friend. They were roommates, right? That's right. Underneath, wide open, and he misses. Worley missed the easy one, and for three. Well, he knew Rucker was going to get three. He'd rather have three than two. Look, Worley is going to tell everybody about that in the locker room. Luke's fired up. <laughs> he's slapping the floor. And he's a tough competitor. Extremely competitive young man. Nice hands. Good steal. The other way. Leslie. Tipped up and good. Time out, Memphis. There's some intensity there at center court. The two All-Americans getting after it right here. Leslie anticipates the pass to Wagner and very, very quick hands. Many people might think this is a breakaway and they don't chase the ball. Wrecker knows it could be a miss. And as a result, he is there to take care of business. You think they like each other? These are teammates. <laughs> got to hurt. <laughs> Did you ever do that when you were coaching? No, absolutely not. No, I slapped five back in those days. That is the Piper High School band you're seeing. John Calipari hired them. They are from Kansas City, and they're going to play the Memphis fight song. He thinks of everything. Boy, I'll tell you, these two guys are unbelievable together as a tandem, aren't they? Wrecker and Evans. Wow. Memphis now 4 out of 12 in field goals. Iowa 7 out of 15 after that slow start. A little soft touch. Barron finally puts it through from 5 feet away. 5 out of 13 now, the Tigers. Woo! Middle wide open, thank you. Is that not traveling? I don't think so. Leslie adds a different dimension to Iowa, doesn't he? He just scoots through the press with him in there. Take a look at the block. Pretty good run by the Hawkeyes after that slow start. Semi-final action, the Guardians Classic. Wherever you go, and whatever you choose to do along the way, you can carry with you the peace of mind that comes from being a member of Wellmark Blue Cross Blue Shield. We're there when you need us, every step of the way. Silver Chevrolet in New Hall is your best priced Chevrolet dealership, located just west of Cedar Rapids. Silver Chevrolet, if you go the distance, we will. Bold in the cold in Columbia from Shields All Sports. When you buy a home from us, we'll take care of you all the way. Depend on it. That's the Haynes way. Make it your way. Come see us. We're the homes people. At Brown Sales and Leasing in Guttenberg and Al Qaeda, we're proud to be Americans and proud to be a Hawkeye fan. Brown Sales and Leasing, your hometown dealer, no matter where your hometown may be. 
Welcome back. We've been doing a little spy searching and found one here. He doesn't age, does he? I'll tell you, B.J. Armstrong, unbelievable, of course, played for the University of Iowa and still supports them readily. A great player for the Chicago Bulls. And there is Milt Wagner, father of Dewan Wagner, who we haven't seen a lot of tonight. Milt. An outstanding player at Louisville and in the NBA as well. Fourth leading scorer in Cardinal history. Helped him to that, what, 86 NCAA championship? That's an exclusive club. Hawkeyes give it up. Burks. Just softly kisses the glass. Memphis is using their athleticism and quickness on defense. Their execution on offense is not something to be desire, desire of right now. But they are really getting after it on that the defensive end. Look at this, another turnover. Here comes Burks the other way, quickly off to right, baseline and the trouble. Back-to-back -back turnovers by the Tigers. Sometimes speed can hurt you. Well, it can if you don't play without the carburetor on there. Right here, you're going to see quickness. Burks extremely quick to the basketball. He gets that one laid in. And the last time down, good post defense. And Wise chasing it on the out-of-bounds. Tough, aggressive defense. Another one. Three on two. Wise to Burks. Offensive foul. You know, Steve is a little upset, and he, he ought to be. Because they really are in a situation where they have a point guard. I wouldn't call it a point guard problem. Burks right there is playing great defense for Memphis, whether it's on Pierce or whether it's on Chauncey. Now the third point guard is in the game. Boyd enters. So now you got two point guards in the game at the same time. And I think Steve is thinking that they're ball handling. They turned the ball over three times in a row. They need a little bit more solid right here. Boyd had a bruised knee early on. Missed some of the early action. Leslie down the lane. <laughs> Slapped up, battered away. The Hawkeyes go three on three. Evans gives it up. Two Tigers dive for it out of bounds. Both teams way out of control right now, Jim. Calipari upset about it, so is Steve Alford. Both teams playing way out of control. They need to slow the basketball up, execute their offense. Of the 18 points for the Hawkeyes, 10 have come in the paint. Oh my goodness, I believe that was a hack. <laughs> How do you not call that? <laughs> he threw it off the glass and went to chase it. Getting bad shots right now. Not what either coach wants. Evans is saying, wait a minute, come on, let's, it's our ball. You know, sometimes, Jim, what happens is intensity gets way up and execution decreases because of that intensity. You've got to find that nice middle ground. Evans misses the soft six-footer. Barron won't go. You're right, Bob. Both teams with his feet are out of control. Yeah, they're, they're really, you know, they're playing too fast for what they can do. I think yeah. another thing that's happened is, is for both teams, they've played less than stellar competition so far. You know, they haven't played anybody as good as each other so far. And as a result, they're psyched up about playing in this game. But then also, they haven't faced this kind of intensity against anybody they've played so far. Nice ball fake. He's solid. I like Chauncey Leslie. Bob Wenzel's alongside. Glad you're on board. ESPN Plus and our live coverage of the Guardians Classic semifinal action. Kemper Arena, the site. Two top 14 teams. And the whistle before the shot. And so far, Dewan Wagner has not done what we thought he might do. Everybody's so excited about this kid. USA Today's number one high school player in the country last year. His dad, Milt, tutoring him now as the assistant coach to John Calipari. There he is. He's used to getting a lot of touches, and he hasn't gotten that many in this game. Three-pointer for Wagner will not fall. We'll set up the rest of that story with Barkley. 55 for the Tigers in a second after that shot of Milt Wagner on the sideline. We talked about 
Calipari and how smart he was. Wagner's best friend is the 6'8 Arthur Barclay, right? Barclay, who yeah. lived with Wagner and his mom. That's right. And he was a year ahead of Wagner. And John recruited Barclay. And Barclay can play, but obviously that helped in the recruiting of Mr. Wagner. Barclay was actually the top New Jersey hoopster as a senior in high school. Wagner with a bad shot, partially batted away. Hawkeyes come the other way, leading by six. They got numbers. Good recovery. Great hustle by Wagner. Wow. Tigers with tenacious defense offensive foul. Calipari is so upset his hair is going to get messed up. <laughs> I don't think that's ever going to happen. There are two guys, Calipari and Ted Treba on the PGA Tour. They don't have to worry about Treba's hair either, ever. <laughs> <laughs> Even in the wind. 50 mile an hour gust, Treba's hair will never get messed up. Well, right here we're seeing a lot of intensity. Wagner really dove on the floor for that. Bodies flying all over the place. Big guys handling the ball in the open court. And what usually happens in that case is there's a turnover, and that's exactly what happens. Look at the aggressive nature of Memphis on the ball. Nice play by record. He knows how to play. Knows how to play with the ball, and as an offensive player, knows how to play without the ball as well. And a great, great pass by Reiner to set it up. Scooter, biggest lead of the game for the Hawkeyes. Left out of bounds, still Iowa's ball. You know, the double team on Evans has been pretty productive. You know, the one time he passed to Reiner for an easy basket down low, but since that time, they've doubled him, and, and Iowa has not been able to score out of those double teams, partly because of the length of the Memphis players. Hawkeyes have turned it over now nine times. But they are more powerful in the paint, both by passing it in there and getting fast breaks. That's why it's 12 to 4 in paint points. Pierce back in for Leslie, so we have the original starting point guard, freshman. Nice penetration. Reiner, for a 6'11 player, Jim, plays. I think he's more comfortable playing facing the basket than his back to the basket. He hails from South Dakota. You could put him up there on Mount Rushmore. 6'11, 255, and just a sophomore. Three-pointer for Rice. Also not a bad student. We mentioned students before. He was valedictorian of his class. And if you don't know what that means, Jim, he means that he's the number one academic person in his class. I'll get you back. <laughs> Inside won't go, and the Tigers bring it down the other way. Anthony Rice. Inside. Slapped away, and it's still the Tigers' ball. All right, valedictorian. It's like Hank Stram used to say. Talking about coaches, there, Steve Alford and John Calipari. We're here in Kansas City, where Coach Stram used to be. They called him up to do a banquet one time. He says, what about the honorarium? He says, that's okay, Coach. Talk about anything you want. <laughs> When you're in need of quality automotive repair, trust Tuffy Auto Service Center. Locally owned, Tuffy's is a full automotive service center with five convenient locations in eastern Iowa. And because they're locally owned, Tuffy's has great customer service and top quality employees. Tuffy's will pick you up and drop you off with our fast and friendly shuttle service. Now at Tuffy's, get a free pre-winter starting and charging test with any lube, oil, and filter package purchased. When you're in need of top quality automotive repair, trust Tuffy's. Great service, great prices, great place. Now that's a Tuffy. Add warmth and beauty to your home with luxurious area rugs from Randy's Carpets and Interiors. At Randy's, we offer Iowa's best selection of fine quality area rugs in dozens of styles and colors. The perfect way to accent any wood, tile, or vinyl floor. We also carry the Midwest's best price, best selection of quality carpet, vinyl flooring, custom ceramic tile, and hardwood floors, all installed by expert craftsmen. The most beautiful homes start with Randy's Carpets and Interiors. Highway 6 West in Colville and on Center Point Road in Cedar Rapids. Score big with Anderson Windows from Ogden and Adams Lumber. Anderson Windows has long been the leader in design and energy efficiency. Don't cut corners with your home, whether you're remodeling or building new. Stop by Ogden and Adams Lumber and see how Anderson Windows can make your house a home. 
If you've had a fender bender or have collision damage of any kind, come to the professionals at Premier Automotive. Our new state-of-the-art facility and 70 years combined experience enables us to make your car look as good as the day it rolled off the factory floor. Live coverage of today's fire at the Old Capitol continues on KGAN News at 10. Season from your friends at ESPN Plus, semifinal action, the Guardians Classic. Iowa with a 10-point lead, biggest lead. And of course, Alabama coming up against Missouri. What a workout Missouri had this morning. Huh? Oh, I'm telling you, they worked. And, and, you know, look at this. Number 8 against 14 and 9 against 22. You don't get this very often at the beginning of the season. This is unbelievable. What a great success this tournament has been. You mean like eat your hearts out over in Lahaina? <laughs> <laughs> well, they've got that too, but I'll tell you what, these, both of these coaches are going to find out a lot about their teams. I think Steve knows more about his team than John knows about his because John's is much younger, and it's showing a little bit. That's Wag a second out of bounds play Wagner scored on, so they're looking to get him, you know, some shots out of situational plays instead of out of the flow of the offense. Iowa at a 46% clip. Memphis just at a 28% clip for field goal. Reiner, nice dish, gets it down low. Look out, the foul in the paint. That was very nice high-low situation right there. Reiner to Evans. And of course, right here, you see the lines out there. That white line is the NBA lane. Of course, the power of Evans in evidence. This kid really is a likable person. They asked him what his favorite food was. He said, purple Skittles. I think they should have that their training meal. If everybody plays as well as he does with purple Skittles, they're going to be in business. A 66% free throw shooter. And you get those purple Skittles where? Well, Kansas City's a good place for them. Brody goes to the bench after spelling. And I think he helped them settle down. Their maturity showing a little bit right now. Well, he's 28 of 44 strikes so far on the season. And they did of Pensacola. Three-pointer will not go down for the Tigers. He's got some adjusting to do at halftime. Well, I think he'll like the intensity with which his team is playing, but their execution offensively has not been strong at all. Nor has points in the paint. Tigers ball. For a big man, Reiner is a very good passer. He really is, and, and you know, they like him at the high post. Duez diving in there. They like him at the high post. They try to isolate him high, and he's a good passer to Evans in low. But Steve told me earlier in the week that he thinks Reiner needs to score a little bit more. He's looking for another scorer besides the two All-Americans, Wrecker and Evans. Great recovery by Iowa. High play pass really, the way. really solid defense there, Jim. You know, Wrecker took a chance and didn't get it. So it was five against four, and Iowa really adjusted very, very well defensively on that possession. 10, the 10 cross court pass, not there. 10 10 in the turnover department. That's a lot of turnovers for each team. Double screen for record. Great fighting underneath oh. by Evans. That's a good display of his ability in the paint against big people. Right here, both of these guys from the panhandle of Florida, Wise and Evans. Massey with a good offensive board, takes it right back. Massey was very nervous today during practice, thinking about going up against Evans. Even though he has great accolades as a junior college player, this is brand new to him. I was nervous today at practice. <laughs> <laughs> Reggie Evans. Shoe size is 15. They call him the Joker. Well, his heart size is very big also. Take a look at this. He goes right over people. And at the other end, we got Massey, who's learning how to play. Remember, Evans was a junior college player, too. Last year at this time, he was doing some of this, like Massey. They both look like Charles Oakley clones. Earl Barron checks back in out of Clarksdale High School, Clarksdale, Mississippi, the seven-footer, 248 pounds. They just keep on coming. You know, a lot of times people get in foul trouble and big other people come in who can't play. Both of these teams 
have players on the bench who all can make good contributions. This kid's going to be a very, very good player right here. A 55% free throw shooter. Pierre Pierce, very nice compliment. Said the best player he's played against is Duane Wade. Yeah, that's pretty interesting, isn't it? Yeah. Play against each other in those high school all-star games. Double team out to Rice, takes it to the paint. Five-footer finally drops on through. Well, Rice's job is to give them something off the bench. He's the first guard off the bench. He's a long-arm defender, can play the two and three spot. Off the iron, rebound pulled down, no foul, and it goes the other way for the Tigers. Shooter slows it down, now clears it on through, and the foul. You know, something interesting about Wagner, you know, I, I, I was thinking coming into this game, Jim, that he would be, you know, hogging the basketball and shooting it every chance he got, and he really isn't doing that at all. He's working within John Calipari's framework of their offense, getting the shots that come to him. He's not trying to force anything. And I think that's a very important coaching point that Calipari's probably instituted in this young man early in his career. I think John's talking about some elbow. No, he's complaining, he's trying to get an edge. You never did that when you coached? No, I never spoke to the officials. The problem was they never spoke to me either. <laughs> Wrecker leading the Hawkeyes with a total of 12 points. Wagner leading the Tigers with six so far. When I was coaching at Rutgers, we did play against Iowa, and that was a team that B.J. Armstrong was on, and they beat us in the NCAA tournament in Providence. And of course, he had a great game. Down to five points after a big lead. Evans inside and the blocking foul. The ability to catch the ball in the middle of the floor is very important. A guy who can take the basket, for, take it to the goal from there. Watch him, he catches it near the top of the key as a center. He makes a nice ball fake, and he can go to the right or the left, and there's very little help when you're in the center of the floor. Uses his right hand to get it up. Very astute player. Evans with four points and eight boards so far. Wagner takes it down, and blocking foul. <laughs> Take a look at this one. Here's some of the offensive prowess. I mean, this is gift right here. Knowing where you are, knowing where other people are, that is a left-handed kiss off the backboard that goes, and he's fouled. This kid has scoring ability. 80% free throw shooter for Wagner. 10 points for DeWan. on their way right back into it. Inside four before halftime. Interesting small lineup in here right now for Iowa. Two point guards. Wreckers playing the three spot. Evans to Pierce. And with a shot clock at 14, the offensive foul. Oh my. Wrecker hates that call. As does Steve Alford. I don't believe he was saying happy holidays. Hi, I'm Jeff Kent, and I'm here to talk about ESPN the magazine. You know, when they first asked me to do this, I was pretty excited. They could have had just about any athlete. So to choose me is really something. It's humbling to be able to give something back. So all you young players out there, listen up. ESPN the magazine is only a dollar an issue. We'll even throw in a free fleece. That's right, Jack. Every when you call 1-800-504-6644, you'll get 26 issues for just a dollar an issue. So call 1-800-504-6644. Thanks for listening to me. You know, most car dealers have rebates. Some have even tried matching the 0% financing. But during November and December, when you purchase a Chrysler product from McGurk Myers Chrysler, seven-year, 100,000-mile limited powertrain warranty with every purchase. 2002 Sebrings, 2002 Concord, 300 M's, Voyagers, and Chrysler Town and Countries. Myers, we do business your way.
Home for the holidays just took on a brand new meaning at McGurk Myers Chrysler in Coralville. Reed's Jewelers is going out of business and in a few short weeks must close their doors forever at three area mall locations. Save 40 to 70% store-wide on Reed's entire fine jewelry inventory. We must soon vacate these locations and huge reductions have been taken on all jewelry, watches and crystal. Over $9 million of inventory must be sacrificed at savings of 40 to 70%. Hurry in for best selection during Reed's Jewelers going out of business sale. Merle Hay Mall, Des Moines, Valley West Mall, West Des Moines and Coral Ridge Mall, Coralville. Spent the entire time out jawing at the official over that last call. Wrecker went over, got an explanation. Well, Alfred was upset. Take a look at the body control of a young freshman, even though he's got the body of a man. Right here, this looks Michael Jordan-esque. I mean, slicing through people. Steve has made an interesting change right here. You know, he's going all small guys with Evans. And I think he feels that that's going to help his ball handling. Alley-oop to Wagner. <laughs> Pretty play. That's great coaching. 13-3 run by Memphis right here. All special set situations. Calipari's team has executed well. Out of bounds, after timeout situations. Worley wide open for three. Iowa's Mr. Basketball two years ago. Excellent, excellent player. Came into this game three out of seven in three-point shots. And it would jump it up. Now that's another one well, of the experimental rules. Rule, right? That's right, Jim. We're going to see, normally that would be an alternate possession during the regular course of the season. But this year, because of the experiment, that will go to a jump ball at half court. In the olden days also, the jump ball would be at the free throw line closest to where it happened. Which do you like better? Well, I, you know, I, I think it, the jury's still out. You know, um, I, I like the jump ball because it adds a dimension to the game that's necessary. And also, the alternate possession kind of thing gets messed up when you're playing really good defense at the end of the game. You're not rewarded for getting a held ball. Excellent point by the former coach at Rutgers. Baseline for three. Bad shot. Hit the iron and just... I mean, that was off by a foot. Yeah, Leslie the other way. The small lineup for Alfred has increased their offensive potential right here. Nice dish by Pierce. And Anthony Rice got pounded. He's looking to see if he's bleeding. Well, if you run into Reggie Evans, you're going to get some blood once in a while. Right here, this is excellent ball movement. Four guards in the game. And Worley goes to the basket strong. Looks like an Evans elbow caught him by accident. Evans, four points and nine boards so far for Reggie. That is Woodham High School in Pensacola. You know, big and strong as he is and the way he patrols in there, I'm, I'm thinking he should be in charge of Homeland Security. What do you think? I think he might be on to something. <laughs> Although you would not want to ride in his car. I'm not sure that the hot boy CD that he's got cranking in there is, <laughs> is your kind of music. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Memphis has made a nice comeback. Nice, nice coaching move by both coaches here. Solid defense by there by Pierce overplaying. Rice is really not a point guard. I don't know what he's doing handling the ball out in front like that. Taking the blame. Calipari getting his team ready for Southeast Louisiana on the 24th of November. Duke is up next for Iowa. Worley, offensive board, takes it back down. Black. And would jump it up, says one official. I think we'll, uh, as Lindsey Nelson used to say, have a confab. Confab? That's where the officials get together. Ah, confab. Right here. Very good position right here. See how the arms are straight up? That means there won't be a foul. Excellent, excellent work right there by Memphis. Good discipline. Evans, fast dish, boy. 
That play would not have happened if there was an alternate possession rule. So now we have a play off the jump ball. Little things can win games. Back to a seven-point spread. Wise has it slapped away. It goes over to the Hawkeyes. A jump ball play. Tap it. Front. Wingman go. It's a classic play that everybody used to teach. Since we haven't had jump balls in a long time, you don't see much of it. Iowa very well prepared in that situation. And a 7-0 run for the Hawkeyes in the last two minutes plus. Tigers came back and knotted things up 27 all. Evans. And the give and go. And the foul inside. Evans goes to the line again. Ball fake gets the defense off his feet, which creates this play right here for Evans. Boyd, excellent job. Wagner leaving his feet. That's a freshman mistake. As much as he gets fouled, Evans' free throw shooting will be a very important factor this year for Iowa in close games because they will go to him and he will get hammered. Three out of six from the stripe. The other thing I noticed on that replay was the good footwork by Reggie. Almost like a wide receiver when the ball is thrown behind you. He was able to keep oh, his focus yeah. and pull it in. Yeah, and he has great mitts, doesn't he? He catches everything. Rice. Barclay. Scooter has it slapped away, and Scooter gets a pinch. Man, we have seen a lot of guys playing above the rim tonight. Scooter gets after it. There's no question about that. He is a classic kind of three-man. Likes to shoot from the perimeter. Slashes a lot to the basket. Lots of bounce in his body. Long arms. He was a 90% free throw shooter back in high school at Raleigh Egypt High School in Memphis. He's got a nice looking touch. 9-0 run for the Hawkeyes now after it was all tied up, 27 all. and the offensive foul. You know, I think one of the things that Pierce is going to have to learn, he averaged 36 points a game in high school, Jim, and as a point guard, that is not your primary duty. And he's taken a lot of plays like this where he just handles the ball, the whole possession, goes to the basket. You're not going to get this. This is perfect position by Memphis. They are right in the right spot to take the charge. Half a minute to go in the first half. 12-12 turnovers all even. Slapped away. Excellent defense by Worley. There's again, freshmen taking the ball to the hole in high school. They don't have a bunch of 6'10 guys blocking shots and taking charges on you. And of course, at the other end, Pierce made a mistake. And right here, plenty of people around guarding him. Terrific defense by Worley. Nice tap by Rice. Yeah, there have been times in this game, Bob, where it's been a lot like on the playground. I mean, they're almost challenging each other mentally and physically. Yeah, th there's a little bit of uh, you got me and now I'm going to get you situations happening. And really, that's not how to play. Sometimes that competitive instinct is very good, but you've got to tame it down. 13 points on the night for Duan Wagner. All USA Today Player of the Year. Once had 55 points against Camden Catholic when he was playing for Camden High School. And perfect five out of five from the strike. Yeah, he's got a nice stroke. He's, and once he's into the game, it's amazing. He's got 14 or 15 points already. It doesn't really seem like that much. He's one of those guys that scores all the time. Nice pressure here. Back door should be available when teams pressure you out this high. Scooter doing a nice job on record. Now he almost tackled him. Fade away. Leslie won't go. That'll do it. Semifinal game number one. The Guardians Classic live from Kepler Arena here in Kansas City. 
77 graduate right there, and John Calipari in his second year as a Memphis Tigers. There's our score at halftime. A couple of top 14 teams. About 270 pounds. You have done your scouting report. Maybe he and Evans would be good. Leading scores for the Hawkeyes. Wrecker with 12. Evans with 8. Wesley and Reiner each with 4. Wagner with 14, as Coach pointed out. Massey with 6. Burks with 4 for the Tigers. And you mentioned Burks, Jim. One of the problems, he's a very good defender. He with the ball right now. He's their point guard. He had 3,000 in the first half. Only played 11 minutes. He was responsible for creating a lot of turnovers. When he went out, things settled down a little bit. Massey misses the first. And it goes back over the Tigers. Hawkeyes enjoyed a 9-3 run over the last couple of minutes in the first half. Bump that lead back up to six. Wise off the iron. Will not fall. Hawkeyes come the other way. Record dives forward at midcourt. We'll jump it up. Again, if you've just joined us, there are some experimental rule changes being used in this Guardians Classic. And one of them we're going to see right now, which is the reinstitution of the jump ball. Normally that situation, a held ball would be alternate possession. Now it's a jump ball situation. You can run a play. We saw Iowa run a play for a layup out of the jump ball situation early. Wrecker will try to tip the ball backwards. Wagner, a better, better leaper. Wrecker did his job. I say, if you've just joined us, where have you been? <laughs> well, I tell you, this is exciting. You know, I mean, to have four teams like this in one place, great venue, right here in Kansas City, Kemper Arena, site of many, many great basketball games. And women's final four. Steve shaking his head, doesn't understand why they turned that ball over. Even though they're, they're an experienced team, it's early in the season to, op to be operating, you know, against great competition on all cylinders. And certainly neither of these teams are operating on all cylinders. Boy, that one could have gone either way, yeah. huh? I thought Henderson had it right there. He was certainly wise to be in the right place at the right time. Always a judgment call. Wagner's going to get physical play against him this year. This is a well-scouted play. He uses the ball fake. I don't know. Questionable. Iowa, 13 turnovers so far. Burks wants it back. Won't get it. Wagner takes it. Offensive foul. <laughs> Well, John's complaining, but uh, I think he charged twice on the same possession. Now, this is trying to do too much right here. He's dribbling the ball four or five times. He gets cut off. Good help defense all around by Reiner. Too much. Maybe the toughest call in basketball, right? Because the players are so fast. Yeah, it's a judgment call. The defense has to be planted in the place before the player leaves his feet. Henderson with a nice move, but couldn't get the soft 10-footer to fall. Offensive board, Reiner. Some of the misses in close are because of the intimidation factors that both teams had. Steve's team playing for the first time this year against people who have massive size and shot blocking ability like Wise and Massey. Double team, nice fade away. Kelly Wise, averaging about 11 and a half points a game so far. First team all conference USA. He was Mr. Double Double last year. 17 times he had double doubles. 21 rebounds at Tennessee in one single game last year. Pretty amazing. And then he had 20 against Miami of Florida. Mature player, Henderson. Pretty good patience that time by the Tigers. Shot clock was down to 12, and the Hawkeyes give it up. That was excellent defense by Scooter right there, overplaying people. You asked me what you thought Calipari would do. I think what we're seeing is they're trying to keep the defensive pressure up. That's the only way they can get their runouts. 14 turnovers for both teams. Burks off the nice pass from Wise. Good vision, too, by Wise. You know, he really wasn't looking that way. Here we see full court pressure. And I think Burks being in really helps their full court pressure. He can be an annoying guy. Burks with six now. He had four in the first half. Both teams pounding the ball inside right now. 
Wise at one end, Evans at the other. Boy, he's almost unstoppable in transition, isn't he? Wagner? I say so. Nice move by Pierce to get to the baseline. This is back to Reiner, cross court record. Henderson not looking to shoot. You think? Evans, easy one. Nice pass by Reiner. Classic high low play. And you talked earlier about Reiner being a good passer. He's certainly showing that tonight. Memphis really pounded it. Burks for three. Classic high-low terminology. You see Evans pointing to Reiner. He knows that he has his man on his hip and the pass has to come from the top. And that is sweet basketball. Evans and Reiner working very well in conjunction with one another. Coordinated both Wrecker, effort. Both Wrecker and Reiner for big men pass the ball very well. Both of them. Forced it. Wise comes down. They have numbers. Burks. In the lane. Man, an easy layup turned into a turnover by the fortuitous hands of Iowa on that one. Barron never had the basketball. He's a seven-footer. It's hard to throw a bounce pass to a seven-footer on the run, you know? Maybe throw it up to him. Lob it. You need one of those trampolines the mascots use at halftime. <laughs> Second violation against the Hawkeyes and a bit bemused as Steve Alford. We never did that when we played for Coach Knight. No, never. Survive the car buying experience with Hargrave McElhaney. No one is immune to service needs. Our service staff is committed to your lifetime of ultimate satisfaction. Hargrave McElhaney is your best strategy to keep your car running strong. Your reward is a vehicle that will outlast almost whatever rugged obstacle you encounter. What will be the next challenge our tribe will conquer? Stop in and find out. At Hargrave McElhaney, you don't just survive, you win. Hey, Jay, where do I put the decimal point when I'm trying to figure out 0% financing? 0% financing? What are you doing, Tom? Well, I think every man should tell the woman he loves how much he loves her with a diamond from Cheap De Hoy Jewelers. And if he buys her a diamond at Cheap De Hoy Jewelers, the least we could do is give him 0% financing. Okay, Tom, here's how 0% financing works. You take the cost of the diamond and add nothing. No financing charge, zero, zilch, nada. 0% financing is a great deal. Comfort, comfort, Bellum's Interior. Comfort means you know you'll find expert service every time. Comfort means you know you found the best. Bellum's Interior. Bellum's Interior. There's comfort inside. the coach Bob Wenzel welcome back on ESPN plus Memphis on the short end by 4 15 47 left to go semi-final game Guardians classic game number one a couple of great coaches trying to shake off some early season season uh, rust on the part of both teams a little over anxious to get things going both final four participants John Calipari 96 took his team to the NCAA final Steve Alford of course as a player won it in 87 with Indiana Memphis 14 of 38 in the field goal department 37 percent Hawkeyes come the other way they're hitting at a 40 percent clip I think the defense is the head of the offense with both of these teams Burks explodes gets it to Scooter bad shot Steve 
Alfred likes Chauncey Leslie. You know, he's only had him for a little bit this year. He's a junior college transfer in his first year with the Hawkeyes. I think he adds a lot to this team. And I think he's going to be experimenting with point guards and numbers of minutes for each guy. Slapped away and back up. Reiner. You know, sometimes as the game goes on, players get tired, but they don't get shorter. And Reiner at 6'11", getting that one easily. Scooter takes it into the paint, gets it slapped away, wanted the foul and didn't get it. Worley checks in for the Hawkeyes. Glenn with three points in the first half, the communications major. Back to a six-point Iowa lead. Coach K, another victory. Well, he had a close one the other night against Seton Hall. For three. Oh, oh, Thank you very much, <laughs> Mr. Wagner. He came in six out of 19 for threes. He's acting like he intended to hit that ball off the backboard. How about 19 of the 39 for Memphis? No, he's a scorer, there's no question about that. A competitive individual, John Calipari, loves him. Not only his talent, says he's a great kid, fun to coach. Great pass by Worley. Talk about threading the needle. Post players from Iowa, great job positioning offensively. He wants to go. Take a look from way downtown. <laughs> no, 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 no. Coach says, Great shot. Oh, yes. Just the way we practice. Just the way we diagram that play. Good switch dribble. Nope. And the foul against the Tigers. Wagner hates it. Alford loves the call. Except it was on the ground, so there'd be no free throw shot in this situation. Anthony Rice out of Atlanta, North Clayton High School. The freshman checks in. He had two points in the first half. Third personal on Wagner. He'll get a little rest. Hawkeyes with a chance off the inbounds for a three-pointer. Both teams executing their out-of-bounds plays under their own basket very, very well. Ball fake to the outside to draw the defense. You get it to your man, steps between. You know, sometimes people think that the defense falls asleep on situations like that, and sometimes that's true, but you know, that was just very good execution. Having the ball on the baseline is like having it in the low post. Evans, five out of eight now from the line and 15 points. Slapped away, good hands again by Evans. Both teams exclusively man-to-man -man in this game. Both teams very aggressive defensively. Massey checks back in. He had six at the intermission. That's Calipari's pet play. With 15 on the shot clock, Rice. It'll be interesting to see right now. You talked about Wagner as being such an important part of their offense for John Calipari. Wagner on the bench now with three fouls. It'll be interesting to see what happens. He's enthusiastically supporting his teammates, but without him in there, we'll see who they go to. My suspicion is that they're going to try to pound it inside to Massey and Wise. Scooter gets his chance at the free throw where he is usually adept. Wise scoreless in the first half. being scoreless in the first half is probably attributable to Mr. Evans, number 32 in black. Four out of six. Scooter from the stripe so far tonight. They closed within six. A few more Missouri and Alabama fans start to fill the stands up here. Down low it goes to Woolley. Burks 
12-footer. Up and good by Massey. They'll have to pick up some of the offensive slack with Wagner on the bench. Well, what happens a lot of times when you shoot a quick jump shot on the, on the break, the defense is not set, and therefore your offensive rebounders get a better chance to go to the offensive boards, and that's what happened for Massey. As long as you're a big guy and you hustle, you can get some easy points that way. Man, the way Ryder is best, he may lead this team in assists this year. Tell you what, there goes Burks through the elbow. Did they get it? No, they called it on the Hawkeyes. Tell you what, Burks went through there with that left elbow flying. Former coach at Rutgers, Bob Wetzel's alongside. We're glad you're on board. Iowa and Memphis, the Guardians Classic, live from the Kemper Arena on ESPN+. Plus. Sondra Leiter checks in, 6'9", 235. The sophomore from Des Moines. A little more size in there for Steve Alford. I think they've really given Ryan just a blow. They're the two-headed center, but Ryan's done such a great job in this game. Evans barely ever comes out, so I think Sunderlight is just in there to spell Ryan. Man, talk about rattling the metal there. Back to within six. Wagner's on the bench, right next to his coach. At 14, Duan did in the first half. Massey tipped up and good. Kelly Wise. If you are a big man and your partner big man is shooting the ball and your man goes to help, that's a green light for you to go to the offensive board. Closest the Tigers have been. Nice offensive board and the foul. Wise and Sonderleiter throwing some elbows. Well, it's going to get physical out there. And when it does, players just need to maintain their poise, which these players are doing extremely well tonight. He is a massive person right there. Chris Massey, 260 pounds. Going against Evans, who's about 250. First time that he's been to the line so far tonight. He's 0 for 1. He had a great year last, the great end of the season last year. When Wrecker was injured, he played a lot more in their last six games, the four in the Big Ten tournament and the two in the NCAAs. It's been a physical game, Iowa and Memphis. It's been an emotional game, and it's far from over. Five-point Hawkeye lead when we come back live to Kansas City. It's nice to know there are some things in life you can count on. Things that are always there when you need them. Making life a little easier. One of those things is a well-marked Blue Cross Blue Shield health plan. We're there when you need us. Every step of the way. Allen's is redefining the car buying experience making it better. The campus is more than just new, it's designed around you. A comfortable place to sit and talk with no pressure. An immaculate service department, they don't miss a thing. A customer lounge more like a hotel lobby. Even a delivery room for your new baby. All this and Allen's commitment to meet or beat any price. Come to Allen's campus and we'll prove it. You can own this home for less than you're now paying for rent. Affordable homes. That's the Haynes way. Come and see us. We're the home people. Let the AC work for you. For all your plumbing and heating needs. Call Ahern Plumbing and Heating today. Silver Chevrolet in New Hall is your best priced Chevrolet dealership. Located just west of Cedar Rapids. Silver Chevrolet. If you go the distance, we will. Iowa trying to increase their record, bump it up to 4-0 on the season and get ready for Duke on the 27th of this month. How about this? Halftime, Sienna on top of Oklahoma State, Eddie Sutton's team. Speaking of Eddie Sutton, his son works for him there, and then we have the Alford duo. 
Steve's dad, Sam, serving as his assistant coach. Quite unusual situation and heartwarming. St. John's, Mike Jarvis and his son also work together in the coaching ranks. Nice try on the dish. Rebound pulled down by 32, Reggie Evans. Boy, Reggie Evans, he's easy to like as a player, isn't he? Woo. Man, oh man. Averaging 22.7, the Pensacola native. Had eight points in the first half. Pierce in the backcourt, he had three in the first stanza. Pierce's idol is Allen Iverson. You can see he wears cornrows in number three. They have the same birthday. Oh, great right. penetration. Jared Reiner, he's got 14. That's double his average. Back in, off the bench, Wagner didn't cool off at all. getting numerous screens. He was voted, Steve was, a year ago, one of the 15 all-university teams at the, for the century at Indiana. Unbelievable. Right here, moving without the basketball, we see the end of it. Wrecker sliding to the hole. And right here, Sonderleiter showing that he's not in there just to buy time. Takes it strong to the basket, and he gets fouled. First time that he's been to the line so far tonight. In fact, it's the first time he's been to the line this season. They call him the Ghost. <laughs> I'll give you 6'9", 235, and that's your nickname, the Ghost. <laughs> We said it's been emotional and it's been physical. We just dialed it up a notch. <laughs> when people get all up in your face, you got to protect the ball, keep your elbows out, and swing it around a little bit. Check this out. Looks like the World Wrestling Federation. Sound delighted calling for a jump ball. I don't think so. He almost needed a dentist. Down low. And the foul against the Hawkeyes. Well, Sondelite is certainly involved in lots and lots of activity here lately. He gets his fourth personal foul, and he has not played a lot of minutes, and Reiner comes back in. He has been very, very impressive. Four fouls on Sondelite. Right here, you see him. He pushes him out. Body's up to him as he catches the ball. He's bumping him with his upper body as well. A little overly aggressive. But you know what? The you first guy off the bench to congratulate him, I think he got the minutes he wanted, and he, he got the physical play was the coach. That's right. That's right. And it, it's not all bad for a player. Rich Walker, the assistant, talking to him about that right now. They have big plans for Sondelider. I think he and Jared Reiner are very, very good complementary players at the center position. Approaching the 5.7 average on the season for the 7-foot from Clarksdale, Mississippi. Earl Barron, he had two in the first half. First time we see zone defense the entire game. 1-2-2. Two, two. See if Iowa adjusts well. Rucker. Well on the shot clock. Bad shot. Burks pulls it down and wants to run. Scooter on the left wing for three. Yes. You can bet they're going to stay in zone right now. Iowa got a shot that it liked on the last possession. They were patient. Wrecker got an open three, but maybe a little fatigue in his legs right now. Oh, beautiful. Great dish inside. All Evans had to do was lay it up and in. Great pass by Worley. I'm impressed by Iowa's passing and their unselfishness. The fact that they have a guy to pass to is very important also. When you get it to Evans, he catches it. Burks traveled. Watch Reggie Evans, 32, work in the paint. He is so strong here. He sets a screen and then opens to the ball. And of course, Barron, thinking that he was going to have to go out and get Wrecker, leaves him wide open. And a beautiful bounce pass by Worley. Coordinated effort, three people. 
Jordy Boyd checks in, number 11, works the backcourt. Steve Alford and the Hawkeyes. Scooter foul record going over the screen right there. Iowa, they turned it over 15 times. The Tigers, 18 turnovers. Memphis back to man-to-man. -to -man. They used the zone just as a way to change things up for a bit. Great speed for a big man. The blocking foul called down low. Record got hit pretty hard on that one. He's limping around a little bit on his left ankle, but he seems to be okay. Rector's certainly not afraid to go in among the trees. Third foul on Barron, and the, and the good thing about John Calipari's team is he doesn't have to worry about fouls too much with his front-line people. He's got lots of big and long guys in there. Talked about Luke Rucker's dad, who played college basketball at Bluffton. How about an athletic family? His sister plays college basketball at Michigan State. Maria. Oh, a Spartan. They call him the Lady Spartan? I guess so, right? Lady Spartan? Michigan State off to a very, very good solid run. Two out of two from the line. Of course, these Iowa Hawkeyes will be seeing play at Michigan State and Illinois and Indiana for that matter. Burks takes it down low and the reverse. <laughs> Ragnar really showing a display of the variety of shots that he can get. Pierce looks a little shaky to me out here. Record did a nice job to save it. Flashy pass. And the foul. What a pass by Record. I mean, talk about a Roger Clements fastball. Watch the one-handed, left-handed pass. Holy cow. This is eyes and hands. Gorgeous pass, a thing of beauty. One of the great things to watch in basketball. Look at that enthusiasm. Bears with three points in the first half out of Westmont, Illinois, Westmont High School. One out of three from the line. Scooter. And the give and go. Pierce takes it back. Wrecker. A little out of control now. 7.45 to go. Nice pass, Pierce. A little helter-skelter right now. Guys feeling a little fatigue. Off the loose ball, some help comes, and... Burks had to run all the way from half court to come back there and try to get the weak side. Good play to foul Pierce. He's not been good from the free throw line tonight. They get a dozen games under their belt. Iowa's going to be something, aren't they? Yeah, you know, they have a lot of good elements. Certainly Wrecker and, and, uh, and Reggie Evans are all-American candidates. And they have a lot of good blend players. I'm impressed by Worley. Reiner, I think, does a really good job point guard position I think is the one that needs more experience and work this young, this young man one of them air ball six points on the night lots of screens here for Wagner three guys set a screen for him in that one play and lots of time for Memphis State to come back Wagner and the foul you know Rector had him in perfect position Jim really bumped through all the screens, played solidly with his feet. He's telling Steve that he went straight up with his hands, but he didn't. Guys, get, it's a very difficult thing to be that intense and to be that aggressive in guarding someone and really trying to stop a guy like Wagner. And then right at the end of the possession, do a great job and then just put your hands a little bit in front of him to draw the foul. Wagner, a good free throw shooter. 23 points on the night, 24 and counting. He came in hitting at an 80% clip from the line. He's averaging 25 points a game in his first three college games. He was quoted as saying, I'm a little anxious, I'm a little nervous. 
back at Camden High School. He averaged almost 32 points a game, led his team to the Group 3 state. So we are live at Kemper Arena, and this one's got a long way to go. Just a five-point lead for the Hawkeyes against Memphis. At Brown Sales and Leasing in Guttenberg and Al-Qaeda, we're proud to be Americans and proud to be a Hawkeye fan. Brown Sales and Leasing, your hometown dealer, no matter where your hometown may be. Let the A-Team work for you, for all your plumbing and heating needs. Call Ahern Plumbing and Heating today. One dollar out of every ten is lost to Medicare and Medicaid fraud and abuse. Now that's a chunk of change. Mistakes, abuse, and fraud cost taxpayers millions of dollars every year. This loss affects everyone. The best ways to prevent losses to Medicare and Medicaid are thoroughly read your Medicare summary notice. Protect your Medicare number. To find out more about this serious issue and how you can help, contact Operation Restore Trust of Iowa at 1-800-423-2449. Survive the car buying experience with Hargrave McElhaney. Finding the right car dealer can be a fierce challenge. Don't look north, west, or south. Look to the east, not that far east, eastern Iowa. The staff at Hargrave McElhaney will point you in the right direction. Your reward is the car you've been searching for. What will be the next challenge our tribe will conquer? Stop in and find out. At Hargrave McElhaney, you don't just survive, you win. Conditioning. Welcome back. Seven and a half left to go. Semi-final game number one. Terrific action tonight. Alabama and Missouri coming up in game number two. You take a look at the brackets here of this Guardians Classic. And, of course, the championship game right back here tomorrow. And each of those two teams won two games on their own home court to get to Kemper Arena. And, of course, playing two more games here. Fans enjoying it. Wagner, 25 points. Seven out of seven from the line and two out of six for three-pointers. And the blocking foul called against Wagner. Now, you don't, that's a stupid foul. Well, it really is not a good foul at all. Obviously, that's not what they wanted. He gets a little over-exuberant. A little frown on the face. Four fouls. It's decision time for John. He's going to pull him right here. He's trying to be aggressive and move his feet, but he bumps. That wasn't much of a foul, was it? No. Well, it was enough because the official pulled it. So he's going to have to come out. And the quick hook. Not a long time deciding what to do. Well, the question Antonio now, Burks in. I'm sorry. The question now becomes how long do you sit this guy? You know, because you, you're, you're behind. He, you're... You're in a situation where he's your best scorer, he's hot. He's got to learn how to play with fouls. He's got to learn how to control himself. I don't think John's going to leave him over there. He's got to get him back with five minutes to go. Needs somebody to help pick up the offensive pace. Burks dishes down low, gets it to Wise on the foul on the paint. It's a foul before, so it'll be a one and one and not a two-shot foul. I'll tell you what. Wagner's an impressive young man, isn't Ooh. he? Man, I'll tell you what. He gets it out of the offense, too. I mean, I, I was expecting to see something different. Of course, Dad. You could put those two together in their prime. That'd be a heck of a backboard. Extra pressure when you're playing with your dad over there. Oh, on the absolutely. Absolutely. And it's got to be a unique relationship because the other, his dad's coaching the other guys too, not just his son. So there's some of that has to go on as well. Nice pass by Boyd underneath. Great move by Evans. Many people think he's the best power pro in the country, and his performance tonight certainly convinces me. His teammate Luke Rector said of Evans, he's just made tremendous improvements since just last year and says he's a marked man this year. Will mark it, 6.50 to go left in the ball game. Iowa on top, 64-56. Hey, can you take Timmy to tuba practice? No problem. Hey, Mr. Uh, Battle of Gettysburg? No problem. Can you take me to the track, please? No problem. <laughs> Chicken is a yellow 
Dodge Caravan. It offers an exclusive power rear hatch hey, my and 972 seating configurations. Now get 7-year or 100,000 mile powertrain protection and 0% APR on 2002 Dodge Caravan. Good evening, I'm Tiffany O'Donnell. Fundraising efforts are already underway in Iowa City to rebuild the old Capitol Dome. Tonight on KGAN News at 10, we continue our extensive coverage of today's fire and look at the future of the cityscape. Also on your official home of the Hawks, complete post-game from Kansas City and the Guardian Classic. But it's that time of year, toy shopping. But are these toys really safe? I'm T.G. Robinette, and I'll have that story coming up. Alongside with his expert analysis, Reggie Evans led the nation last year with 22 scoring and rebounding double-doubles. I don't think anything has changed here. He shows his passing display. He's double-teamed and gets the ball to Ryan. Then at the opposite end, he shows his rebounding display. And then positioning inside. And then this last one we just saw where he splits the defenders. Two big men. And he gets it to the goal. The guy's a fantastic player. 19 and 12 tonight. Juwan first Weicker. possession, I'm sorry, first possession of zone right here for Iowa. Scooter, can't get that one to fall. I started to say that Dewan Wagner is still on the bench with four fouls. He's going to come in next dead ball, I would guess. Excellent guess. Wagner's up. Wrecker, shot clock down to 15 to Evans. Evans is the anchor for this team. Everything goes through him. He should touch the ball on almost every possession. Shot clock. A nice dig. Missed everything. Good pass, though, by Rucker to set it up. Burks flies. No give up in the Tigers. Full court trapping pressure. Massey never saw it, otherwise he could have come up with a pick. Boyd, a little shaky right here. Iowa has not displayed great offense against the press tonight. We're, we're Boyd socks. <laughs> Shot clock down to 10. Boyd for three. He's 0 for 3 on the season in three-pointers. Burks is a blur. To Rice for 3. 5-0 run by the Tigers. They climb back to within 3. Wise was slow. That was easy. There was a double team, Jim, but no rotation. Nobody home for the defense. Nobody helped out. Back to a five-point Hawkeye lead. Winner advances championship game tomorrow night. Wise fights it back. Oh. Won't go. That is a manly rebound right there. Among the trees. Hello. Mrs. Evans, little boy Reggie, 6'8", 250, and still growing. And it's attitude, too. I mean, you know, he's really a worker and a lunch pail type of player. Look at this. How about that rebound? Now we'll jump it up. Again, that experimental rule. Jump balls held at center for all situations. The proper call in this situation. Look at this. He comes from nowhere. He gets the rebound among the trees. He's going to help somebody out right away when he goes pro, huh? Absolutely. This guy will, too. Wagner, you know, he contemplated going to the NBA straight out of high school. Like some players, they took several big men in the last NBA draft. If somebody asked me what I thought about the NBA draft. I said, I think from now on it should be on Nickelodeon. <laughs> Does Wagner look 6'3 to you? No. Nah, nah. But, you know, he's, he's just strong. He looks 6'2", I'd say. 
but he's strong. Physical, his upper body is very strong. I mean, he's a very well-developed guy for his age. You know what he's got? He's got that angel cordero. He's got the strength of a jockey. Yeah, really Look at the upper body. He's buffed. He really is. I mean, he's going to get all kind of attention from everybody they play in Conference USA. And, of course, Conference USA this year is the highlighted coaches. Patino back at Louisville. And certainly Bobby Huggins at Cincinnati has been a stalwart in that league. And now Calipari at Memphis. First one that Wagner's missed from the free throw line tonight. Earl Barron, the seven-footer, checks in, number 30. When players go to the bench, frequently the assistant coaches work with them about certain that things that the head coach tells them to talk to them about while the head coach actually coaches what's happening on the floor. So that's one of the things that's very important about assistant coaches during the game. Calipari has two former players, Tony Barbie and Derek Kellogg on his staff. Wagner, know his system. On the pine at the moment. Record better hurry. Two on one the other way. They're letting them play. They are. I like that. Inside off the paint. Oh, man. What a pretty move by Worley. And part of the reason he was open is Evans was being double teamed. Left the basket available. For three. Calipari can't believe. No foul. Well, that's what he's supposed to do. He was handling the ball earlier and messing up and making turnovers. But Bryce is a three-point shooter. Traps effective. What a run by the Tigers. Rice buries the three. He came in four out of six from three-point range. Look at the emotion from Memphis. Big men trapping at half court is very, very effective because you can't make passes over them. Leslie right here with the dribble, but Burks, and watch Massey come up and double-team him. Trying to dribble through a double team, not advisable. Wise came up with it, fast forward it up to Burks, and Memphis has drawn to within one. Well, certainly we talked at halftime, Jim, about what we thought was going to happen in the second half, and I think increasing pressure is the important thing for Memphis. That's what they can do at this point in the season very, very well, and it's been effective against Iowa. Turnovers, very, very important going down the stretch here. What John's doing also substitution-wise is he's putting Wagner in for offense, and then he's taking him out when there's a dead ball and putting a different player in for defensive purposes most of the time. Right now he's in. They go with a three-guard lineup with McFadden. Two post players. Break the timeline. slow it down 21 on the shot clock it'll be interesting to see what iowa runs out of the timeout they want wrecker and evans to handle the ball foul called on scooter well, he's going to have two shots right here you know you were talking about the bench coaches the assistant coaches who was the best that you ever worked with at doing that at working with the kids from the bench even though he wasn't a head coach well, you know, I think a lot of the guys in this tournament, you know, I, I, I mean, Quinn Snyder, for instance, from Missouri, was the assistant coach and then the associate head coach at Duke for many years. You know, he played in, in uh, several Final Fours, three Final Fours, and coached in two Final Fours. So I think he's a good one. Tony Barbie and, and Derek Kellogg, the two you see in your frame right there, both were terrific players, and they helped Calipari with his, with his system. They know what he's like. They can deal with the players on an individual basis. Memphis not dead yet. Biggest lead. We'll give it to you when we come back. Turtle Wax. Grizzly Grill Guards. Rancho Shocks. Gas cans. 
Advance Auto Parts carries more parts than any other store, including one you won't find anywhere else. We need some help. We need a lot of help. Advance Auto Parts. The best part is our people. Diamond Joe has a mission for you. Win $25,000 cash. Just use your Wild Club card to earn entries into the giveaway. And with a $25,000 cash prize, it's a giveaway you'll want to investigate. Get complete mission details at Diamond Joe Casino. The Diamond Joe Casino, where the tables run wild. The Diamond Joe Casino, where the slots run wild. The Diamond Joe Casino, where the river runs wild. Now there's a place to get pizza made the way you'd make it if you could. With the same tomato sauce used in fine Italian restaurants. Sauce made from fresh-cooked, vine-ripened tomatoes. And that's only one reason why Papa John's is now the fastest-growing pizza company in America. Call and we'll deliver all the delicious reasons right to your door. Better ingredients, better pizza. Papa John's. Call Papa John's and try a large pizza with the works. The signature pizza includes seven of our quality toppings for just $9.99. Three minutes left in regulation. Will we have overtime here in the semifinal of the Guardians Classic? That would be nice. The more of this I see, the better. Great, great game. Lots of great talent out here. Two well-coached teams by prominent coaches in the NCAA. And two good comebacks by Memphis twice. They were down by 10, two different occasions, both in the first half to this Iowa Hawkeye team and scratched and clawed their way right back Bob. into it. The alley -oop. One man to beat. Pierce will set it up. Wise on Pierce's part. Smart play, wasn't it? One of the more judgmental things in a positive sense he's done tonight. Little weave action with a screen high. Trying to isolate Evans low. 14 on the shot clock. We said it's been physical the whole game. That was really tough right there. Wagner with four fouls goes after Pierce like that. Fish was talking about a reset on the clock. Shot clock was down to 14. There's, there's no change of possession. There was no change of possession there, so they need to run it down. Well, they straighten out the clock. Foul trouble. Burks with four. Wagner with four. Massey and Wise, three each for the Tigers. Leslie, Wrecker, Evans, and the situation for the Hawkeyes. Well, obviously, foul trouble. The guys with four, if they get one more, they are out. So both coaches cognizant of that. And, of course, the most important guy with four is Juan Wagner. Shot clock now down to ten. From the wing, Burks with the rebound. They got the right guy shooting it. Wrecker's their man. Wagner with a fadeaway. Slapped out of bounds, and it goes over to Memphis. Dad's ready to come and suit up. <laughs> so we got dads on both sides. We have both Alfords coaching on one side and a player and a coach on the Memphis side as well. There's Sam, terrific high school coach. Steve played for him before going on to Indiana and his stellar career there. for three. Wrecker pulls down another board. In one of the games this year, Wrecker has 10 rebounds, and for a guy who doesn't jump that high, that means he is clever. Wrecker gives you a lot of minutes, too. You cannot wear him down. They gotta go to Evans. Got clocked down to 12. Just missed the mascot. Now, the last couple of possessions, obviously, Luke Brecker, a very strong competitor. He's feeling a little fatigued, though, right now. You can see him bent over, gasping for air a little bit. Four Ten guys on the perimeter and isolate Evans inside would be a good thought. Ten on the shot clock. Really? For three, air ball. Barron pulls it down. Wagner tries to go. Wagner taking it all the way, driving through traffic. 
<laughs> I don't know. Sure looks like he got part of something on that one. Ouch. No blood, no foul. 65 ticks in regulation. Wagner would rather clear than get a pick. Inside, bad shot. Bad decision. I'll tell you, Wrecker could use some oxygen. <laughs> he's hurting a little bit right now. Or he's really going to pressure him. Or he's playing possum. Wrecker. Accepting the award for best supporting actor, <laughs> Luke Recker. How about that? He almost lulled him to sleep, didn't he? He really did, but Iowa has not scored in the last four possessions. Recker, Recker taking three of them. Right here, he splits the defense. He comes up, nice balance. Short-armed it, no follow-through. And Evans there helping. Calipari reacting to the last miss by his star freshman. Excedrin headache number 150. Double the 50. It's 100 years of Iowa basketball they're celebrating this year. And Iowa City was actually the site of the first collegiate basketball game played with five players on a side. The event took place at Close Hall at the University of Iowa campus January 18th, 1896. They played five on five. And in that game, the University of Chicago defeated Iowa by a score of 15 to 12. And neither team had any substitutes. I think that's a great idea. Most of the guys I played with, they didn't want to have any substitutes either. But the weekend was not a total loss for Iowa. What happened? The preceding night, the Iowa debate team won. All right, that's so they true. split. That was the seventh. <laughs> 100 years of Iowa Hawkeye basketball. That's very interesting. I like that. Three-point lead. Calipari's team a couple of times. Down by 10. Coming up next, Missouri and Alabama. The winner of that game in the championship against the winner of this tomorrow. Right back here live, Kemper Arena. Foul called on Scooter. Silly. Because they're shooting two. They played such good defense, there's no reason at all to give a very good free throw shooter two easy basket, two easy shots right here. You talk about the youth though. Scooter's a sophomore. Right? That's right. Duan's a freshman. Right. I mean, they're going to make some errors, and John knows right. that. And, and, and obviously tomorrow when they go over the film, he's going to talk about just that. Three out of four from the line now for Rucker, and a total of 19 points. Well, I was getting more free throws because Memphis is being very, very aggressive defensively. Rucker came in hitting at a 90% clip. Three out of 10 from the line. He's had another good night tonight. Boyd sits down. Pierce coming in for defense. Boyd handling the offensive side. Pierce is a little bigger. Maybe can rebound a little bit better. Rice has been a good three-point shooter lately. Wagner wants it. He better hurry. They need a three and a two somewhere. Pushes that one too far. The rebound comes down. It won't drop for Earl Barron. Wagner is getting isolated, and John's giving him every look. He's being well guarded. Right here, Barron does a good job of getting after it on the offensive boards. At seven feet, he has an advantage. Has played a long time. He's a junior right now. Played for the World University Games in China when they won the bronze. And came in. Five out of seven. 71 percent clip from the line. He's three for three tonight. Earl Barron is. Pierce and Boyd switching places. Offense, defense substitution for Iowa. Pretty poised right there for a seven-footer from the line is Antonio Burks, the sophomore from Memphis. Booker T. Washington High School checks back in. Memphis now wants to pressure to try to create a turnover, but they do not want to foul. Iowa on their part, they've got to handle the ball, get the, ha get the ball in the hands of Wrecker as much as possible. Most experienced player. Slapped out of bounds and a good defensive play by Wagner. No foul. 
Now you can't move on this situation. The man bringing the ball in bounds cannot move, so that's a little bit of a disadvantage. You can see the official pointing to the spot right there for him. You cannot move is what he's telling him. Rather emphatically pointing to the spot. <laughs> says, think about Velcro. Boyd almost gave it up. Wrecker brings it out. Tigers bring it down. Nice pass. It goes to Burks. Calipari cannot believe it. He got the turnover they want, and Burks blew the easy one. Unbelievable play. Effective pressure. Burks hasn't missed a shot like this since he was in sixth grade. Look at these guys after it. Wagner dishes. This is going to be an easy one. Oh, my goodness. And the reaction. He got the pressure, he got the turnover, the nice pass by Wagner. If he makes that, it's a one-point game. Instead, it's a three-point game with Reiner at the line. Reiner of Trip South Dakota. 6'11", the sophomore. This is a very important free throw because if he... If he makes one, it's a two-possession game. You know, there'll be a four-point lead, so they need a three and something else. He misses both. Chance for a three is there. Nice poise. Two-possession game now. Two out of three from the line coming in. Four points in the first half for Reiner. And as the coach points out, a two-possession game with 11.2 ticks left in a regulation. Ryan has done a very fine job tonight. His play has been excellent, both as a passer, getting Evans involved by being a high-low passer, and then also defending against the big people from Memphis. Growing up little by little. Great action in the Guardians Classic. Iowa and Memphis here. Look at the rankings of the teams that made it here in the semifinals. Alabama and Missouri. That game coming up next. And the championship tomorrow night right back here on ESPN+. Plus. Who will it be? Iowa against Missouri or Alabama? Or maybe Memphis comes back. I'll tell you what, you know, the, the interesting thing about this is these teams are all playing here tomorrow, so you come into this from a standpoint of a coach's standpoint and his team's standpoint, you're going to come in and play two games against ranked teams on consecutive nights here. That's great preparation for the NCAA tournament and for their respective leagues, the Big Ten and Conference USA. Down by four, but they've got to hurry. Flying on the right side goes right. Time out. Took him seven seconds after the missed three throw by Ryan. Went out. Right here, Iowa does not want to foul. And he gets the step, and Evans does just token effort at him because he doesn't want to foul him and give him a three-point play. So as a result, an easy shot by Rice. Now the situation presents itself. Iowa's in a, in a long pass possibility situation. This time on the inbound play, the man bringing the ball inbounds can move along the sideline. And frequently, that gives you a little bit better passing angle to get the ball inbounds. What Memphis wants to do here is try to get a five-second count to get a turnover on the inbound bounds pass they want obviously to steal the ball and if they can't get a steal they want to foul immediately they don't want Iowa to run any kind of clock on the on the opposite side Iowa maybe can throw a football pass a long pass to throw a touchdown kind of thing if they're being overplayed too much they do want to inbound the ball to a good free throw shooter because they know whoever catches the basketball is going to be fouled well, he's diagrammed what he wants defensively on the chalkboard. You've got Leslie for speed. You've got Wrecker, obviously, for size and poise and inbound. Henderson. Better hurry. And the foul. Being able to move along the baseline was a very important thing. It was almost a five-second count. John saying, wasn't it five? Wasn't it five? 
and Worley's going to get his chance at the free throw line. It might have been 4.5. <laughs> it was pretty getting close. pretty close, wasn't it? It was getting pretty close. They did a nice job. Memphis is a very solid pressing team. That's going to be one of their instruments to victory this year in a very tough Conference USA. Six out of ten, a 60% free throw shooter. Hey, the officials have done a good job because there's been a lot of drawing by both coaches and the officials have kept the lid on. And no technicals. Important free throw here. Three-point game. Now it's a four-point game. Iowa, eighth ranked in the ESPN USA Today poll. Easy win against Maryland Eastern Shore, 89 to 59. Then against Boston University, 90 to 61. Louisiana Tech, 75 67. How about 4 0 going into the championship game tomorrow night? I'll tell you what, great start. Couldn't have been any better. I talked to Steve about a week ago before this this game and, and after he had won his games at home and he was very concerned about coming in here. He felt confident about his team in terms of their experience. He's in love with Evans and Wrecker. But he told me that he needed other people to step up offensively. And the two he mentioned were Worley and Jared Reiner. And certainly those two players have done a tremendous job tonight. The Crimson Tide of Alabama getting ready to come on in. Along with University of Missouri. What a field we've got here making it to the semifinals of this Guardians Plus. Glad you're on board. Temper Arena, our venue, ESPN Plus. Kareem Rush of Missouri might be the best player in the country. And the three-point Hail Mary by Rice. So the Hawkeyes advance to the finals. Twice, Iowa built up 10-point leads. Twice, Memphis clawed their way back into it. Good game, game number one, Parts. Absolutely a good game, Jim. Very impressed by both teams. Steve Alford's team really did a good job. I think their experience showed in the latter part of the game. Their star player, Reggie Evans, and their...